I said, if God chose Job to go through, why can't he choose me? So she began to cry, and I began to pray in my spirit and try to give us an encouraging word. You know, I'm the one standing in the storm. So I began to encourage her. I said, Mama, I said, it's all right. But through it all, I just learned to trust in Jesus even more. So through this, I'm going to try to just shorten it up a little bit because it's, 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 it's been a year, over a year. Yeah. Amen. I began to go through my chemo, and my chemo just was devastating to my body. I mean, I went through where I could just flip my clothes around on me. And my family started saying, we, we need to try to see what we need to do to buy you some clothes. I said, no, 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 I won't stay like this. This is just a short time. I said, I will be getting back in my clothes. And they would come over there sometime, and they look like they just hanging on me. But I said, I'm all right. I said, I'm all right. We're going to get back in my clothes. So anyway, make the story short. When they come over there, and they would see me, and I would worship, and I would praise. Going back and forth to chemo after chemo after chemo. Amen. I had to go so long because... My breath had gotten sized, amen, praise God, two big old baseballs, amen, that's because the cancer was so big, the tumor was so big, amen, that we had to do some readjustment to my body in order for me to even fit in a bra. I said, God has been good to me. God has been good to me. So taking me through the chemo, and they had to try to shrink the they couldn't do surgery right there. They had to shrink the, the tumor that was in there. And as they began to shrink this tumor, amen, praise God, they had to get it to a certain size before they can do surgery. And then right after surgery, two weeks later, I wrapped back in the chemo. And I used to go to have my chemo done, and we have to have the port put in our shoulder. And when they put the port, the port in your shoulder, they have to go through it every time we go. I just had had surgery to have the port in. When they put it in there, it seemed like I was just melting out the chair. I told them, I said, you know what? The cancer not doing me bad. It's y'all going through the port doing me worse than the cancer. Because they have to shove it through a piece of plastic that's in our chest to get through, to get into. Y'all nurses know what I'm talking about. So I sit there and I pray. So when I walked in that doctor's office, I thank God for Dr. Moran and all my doctors. That doctor, he led me. Other folks told me I should have went to other doctors. I said, if God didn't lead me to go nowhere else, I'm not going anywhere else. All right. When I walked in Dr. Moran's office, he looked at me. I told him I didn't have a T-shirt on to say I love Jesus. I wasn't advertising Jesus all no right. kind of way, but just let my light shine. When I walked in their office, Dr. Moran walked in there, never seen me a day of his life. He walked in, I can look at you and see you're going to get through this already. I haven't even said a word. But my light that was shining, I said, God, you sent me in dark places that my light can shine. So when I walked in there, amen, I was able to have prayer. This man started sharing personal stuff with me. That I was able to edify some spiritual stuff in him. Do you follow what I'm saying? That's why we got to take Jesus everywhere we go. Longer and longer, I'm shortening it up. The chemo just took toll upon my body. But you know what, Mother? While I was going through, I was always praying to God. That don't let your old friends come by. Don't let your friends come back. Because your friends would have saw what they didn't see. And had some of y'all thinking I was ready to be put in the grave. So I pray, don't let your friends come by my house. Don't let them come see me as what they think I look like. Because to me, I wouldn't have looked like what they thought I looked like. So I said, God, let everybody keep praying for me. But keep your friends out of the way. Because I don't need them to take a report out of my house, back to the street, for what they thought.
thought they saw, but they did not see. So I suffered on, suffered on. The chemo started eating on my body, just eating on my body. My arms and hands turned just as black as this thing, just as black. And it was eating on my, I mean, I would take, what was it, such a chair, a crab opener, oyster opener. They was with me. And I would scrape my skin, just try to get some relief of the itching in the down inside. You never could get to it, but it just made it feel better. And I would scrape down in my hands and my feet. If I went to the store, Sister Havana, and I saw some carpet look like it was rough, I would run to the carpet shop and sweep the carpet. Just to get some relief to the bottom of my feet. Because my feet were just tingling and itching so bad. I told mom if I had all the money back that I done bought ice with it, freeze my hand and my feet. Amen. I can be able to pay some bills. Because I would used to have to stop along the way from city to city. They just buy bags of ice. And I would tell them, I said, put it in a cup or pour it on a bag. Where I can put both feet down in the bag. Where I can put my hand down in the bag. You said, why was you doing that? See, what I was doing, I was freezing it and knowing that I could not feel what was going on in it. So one day, we had to go to church. I just came back from Orlando for one of our conventions. Went home, got dressed. We went to church to Little Whiskey. And I was steady scraping. I said, God, I didn't ever give up church. I didn't find a reason to stay out of church. Because, see, folks now find a reason if they got a toothache to stay out of church. But I was trying to find a way to still get to the house of God. But we got there. The pews were crowded like this. And I was just rough. 